Hello, today we will be discussing the Tardu scale. This scale involves a resistance of musculature when a therapist completes passive range of motion at different speeds. This test can be used for patients who have had a stroke, a brain injury, or children with cerebral palsy. The amount of time it takes to administer this test will be largely dependent on the number of joints that are being tested. For this test, you will need a goniometer, a paper and pen to record your results, and a mat table or whatever the patient will be lying down on. We will now specifically discuss how to perform this assessment. So the TARDU scale measures both the quality and the angle of a passive range of motion. To begin, we start with R1, which is moving the limb as fast as possible. After that, we assess the range of motion available with a goniometer. This is also known as V3. Next, we complete V1 or R2, and this is moving the limb slowly. We also, we then take that measurement with a goniometer. So the amount of spasticity is gonna equal the difference between R2 and R1. A larger uh, difference indicates more spasticity, whereas a smaller difference may indicate something like tightness. I'm gonna be demonstrating V1, V2, and V3. V1 is moving the limb slowly. V2 is the speed of the limb falling against gravity. And V3 is moving the limb quickly. V1 and V3 are most commonly used when calculating the Tardu spasticity angle. So in this video, we'll demonstrate the quality scale for the Tardu scale for this. So here I have the patient's arm and we'll move it into our passive range of motion. So first, as we go through passive range of motion, you can see here that there's no resistance, which would be a zero on our quality scale. Now, if we repeat this, we have our passive range of motion, but we feel some slight resistance, but this is followed by a release. That would be a quality scale of one. And then as we go through, we have our passive range of motion with a clear catch here but then there is a release that follows. That would be a two on our scale. So we go through our passive range again, and now we have a catch and then a clonus. It's fatigable of less than 10 seconds, followed by some rigidity, but we do get to that end range of motion. That would be a three on our quality scale. And then finally, for our last example, we have our passive range of motion. Ending in a clonus that's non-fatigable of more than 10 seconds. And this would be a quality scale rating of four. So in this video, we will be demonstrating how to assess um, for spasticity using the Tardu scale. We'll be measuring, um, taking two measurements, R1 and R2, through passive range of motion of elbow extension. So our first measurement of R1 will be taken at V3, which is moving the joint as fast as possible. So as we have our passive range of motion as fast as possible, we'll measure this angle here. And then following that, we'll move all the way through, going through V1, moving as slow possible through this and this will be our R2 measurement. That difference will determine the amount of spasticity that's present at the joint and then if it's a smaller value we might be able to determine if it's more tightness than spasticity versus a much larger value which would be more due to spasticity. So Aaron, I'll have you go ahead and lay down on the table here. Thank you. So we'll start at her full flexion range of motion here. I'll find these bony landmarks and map out my goni. 
Okay, so first we take the arm and move through this fast range as possible. And here we'll take our first measurement of R1. And this value is getting a degree of 120 degrees here. So then we move all the way through as slow as possible to get 180 as R2. So if we take the difference from 180 minus 120, then that leaves us with 60 degrees and that will be her spasticity angle. This is a very large angle for this, so this would mean that a lot of that limited range is more due to spasticity than for tightness. So here we will be demonstrating finding the tardu spasticity angle or the popliteal angle um, for Aaron's left leg here. So our first measurement will be taken at V3, which is moving as fast as possible, and we'll find that value at R1. After taking that measurement, we'll move the joint through, um, moving slowly to find our R2 value, taking the difference of those will determine the amount of spasticity um, that's present at the joint versus the amount of tightness that's there. Okay, so Erin, I'll go ahead and have you lie down. So first, I'll bring your legs up to a 90 degree angle here, supporting the leg, and then I'll have my gurney all set up and ready to go. Okay, and then we take our first measurement at R1, going as fast as possible through this. And so here we have first angle measurement, and we are minus 45 from that full range. And then we move slowly into R2, and this is minus 10 here. So we take the difference of those two, and that would give us our um, cardio angle. So minus 45 to minus 10, so we get that difference of 35, which would indicate more spasticity than tightness present at that joint.